God is waiting on the warrior in you to guard your words. God is waiting on the warrior in me and us to guard our words. One time at the counseling center, there was a lady who brought her teenage son to me. She walked through the door carrying a box. She told her son to sit down and shut up. And he waited in the waiting room as she came in with the box. Now I care deeply about this family. She sat down on the couch very upset. And the first thing she did was pour out a box of stuff onto the floor. She started ranting and raving about her son and was very angry at her son. And she had a right to have righteous anger. But it, it turned unrighteous with some things that she said. Her son felt very beat down as he waited in the waiting room. But when she poured the box onto the floor, there was weapons, there was drugs, there was tobacco, and there was pornography. I looked at the lady and I said, Ma'am, I need you to get that mess up off my floor now as fast as you can. She could tell something was really bothering me and she felt terrible about it and she apologized. And she said, I'm sorry, I didn't think it would bother you to see it. And I said, Ma'am, you know, those things that you just put on my floor, um, you know, they don't, the, the, the drugs, it doesn't tempt me. The tobacco, it doesn't tempt me. The weapons don't bother me. I'm a man. I, guys like weapons. But I said, ma'am, you never, ever put pornography in front of a man. I said, I don't care if it's your pastor, your daddy, uh, your best friend who's a guy, um, spouse. You never put pornography in front of a man. It's, it's too tempting. And she apologized. And I said, ma'am, you are just, I said, we need to talk. I said, you, you have definitely have a right to be upset with your son for the drugs that he's doing and the, and the ways that he's being defiant towards you. And, and we're going to take it serious and we're going to help your son. Um, and if he's either going to honor the Lord and honor you as his mom or he's going to have to leave. Um, he was old enough that he didn't have to live at home anymore. He was, he was 18 years old. I said, but ma'am, we need to talk about your stuff too. And she looked at me very confused. And I said, ma'am, men struggle in sin some ways that are different than women. I said, I'm not stereotyping women. I said, but a lot of times um, I've, I've heard it said that men sin more with their eyes and women sin more with their, their mouth. Uh, we're all sinners. We sin daily. So... Um, whether that's a true statement or not, it, it's we're all sinners either way. But I said, ma'am, your, your words, have you listened to yourself talk? Have you heard the things you've said? Um, the names that you, you, you call your son, the, the, the hurtful things that you say with the sarcasm and the jabs. I said, ma'am, that's just as sinful. I said, James 1.26 says, if you consider yourself to be religious... But don't keep a tight rein on your tongue. You deceive yourself and your religion is worthless. She started crying. She felt very remorseful. She got up. She went in the other room and she hugged her son. And they were able to be reconciled. And then we focused on both of their, their hearts and things that needed to be changed. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting with verse 19... It says, Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I have called on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make the choice by loving the Lord your God and obeying Him and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to your life. Wow. The key to our life is just is, is loving the Lord and obeying Him and committing ourselves to His ways. Well, one of the things that He wants us to obey Him on is, is being careful of how we talk. Ephesians 4.15 tells us to speak the truth in love. Um, I don't want you lying to people. I, want you to, I, I need you to tell them the truth, but, but do it with love. It's very important that you do it with love. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, starting with verse 20, it says, Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. 
The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. You know, in the book of James, chapter 3, the whole chapter is about the tongue. And I'll go there in just a minute, but our words are, are powerful. There was a, there's an old saying that's, that's not true. And the saying goes, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words will never hurt you. That's, that's so untrue. Words, words can destroy a person's life. Uh, bullies are, are known for just torturing people mentally and emotionally um, by their words, by their statements. Uh, and many a spouses feel beat down by their, their spouse. And many a children feel beat down by their parents and the way they talk to them. Uh, we must be careful of the words we use. I, I encourage coaches to be careful because the way they talk to their athletes, they'll forever remember them as their coach. And, and the impact that a coach has with their words is incredible. In James chapter 3, it, it says this, um, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in, the, in its mouth, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can, can set a great forest on fire. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It, it is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set free on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless and evil full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in, his, in the image of God. And so blessings and curses come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out, out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. It's so important for us as believers to be careful of our words. Our words define a lot about our heart. Uh, we see in, in Luke 6 uh, verse uh, 45, it says, A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. You can tell a lot about a person by just listening to the way they speak. Uh, just let, let them talk. You can see where their loyalties are. Uh, when I'm talking with a person and I hear them dishonor their parents, um, immediately I know that their heart's not in a good place. Um, I realize that there are a lot of people hurting. A lot of people have been hurt. And so there's bitterness. And so I'm not judging people. I've been there. Um, I'm, I'm very cautious, though, um, to, to remind myself that if I complain, then I am spreading bad news and I'm not spreading the good news. The more that people see me, um, hear, hear me praying and hear me reading the scriptures and hear me encouraging and hear me um, edifying and, and being positive and that, that ministers, you know, what comes out of my mouth will minister to the people hearing. So if I'm negative, if I'm complaining, if I'm sarcastic, if I'm slandering and gossip, then I'm blowing my witness, I'm being a stumbling block. So you must be very careful. Sadly, you know, I'll, after church, you know, maybe may go out to eat or something, and I'll hear people talking in restaurants, and a lot of the times what I hear, I'll hear a dirty joke, or I'll hear a lot of gossip, a lot of slander, um, we must be careful. We must be careful. Um, the, the world, the lost, is listening to how we talk. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, it, it talks about spiritual gifts. And it says, if you have the gift of speaking, speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Um, a friend of mine is, is very passionate 
when they speak, very gifted when they speak. But the problem is, is that they're very sarcastic. And, oh my goodness, when they're fired up, they will go off. And they will, um, they can be very hurtful with their words. Well, I love this friend. And I told this friend, you know, I have to speak the truth and love to them. And I, I had to tell them that being sarcastic is, is sin. It's prideful, so it's sin. I had to tell them that, you know, when they let their tongue get out of control like that, um, they're sinning and they're hurting a lot of people. And, and I'm quick to remind them, I sin every day. And I want them to love me enough to speak the truth and love to me and call out my stuff if they see something or hear something. But it's been amazing because this friend um, has been willing to let me walk with them through that journey and just love on them and pray for them and to help them to be more cautious in how they speak. But we all need it. It's not just them. It's, it's all of us. We all struggle with our mouth. I mean, if you, I just read James 3, the part of James 3 to you. No man can tame the tongue. We, we all struggle uh, with our tongue. And we must be careful. Well, how do, you, how do you get help for that? Well, God's not a liar. I mean, His Word is true. In Mark 9, 23, it says, All things are possible for those who believe. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, so we can do it through the help of Christ. Uh, the more you pray, the more you read your Bible, uh, the more you confess your sins, the less you're going to gossip, the less you're going to slander, the less you're going to cuss. The more intimacy you have with the Lord, the better your tongue's going to be. This series on, on you know, Waiting on the Warrior, it, the main goal is to help bring you into a more intimate relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the more you do that, the more intimacy you have, the more you will be able to, to walk this out with your tongue, with your words. When I was a little kid, I didn't like to, to read or to write. Um, writing was very difficult for me, um, and reading. But now I love to read the Bible. And uh, I had shared in an earlier devotional about being addicted to the Word. But I also love to write. If you're struggling with the way you talk, if you find that you are, you are a negative person or sarcastic or um, you slander, you, you cuss a lot, I encourage you to also prayer journal. Because when you prayer journal, you get to see your words. And it helps you to be more cautious with your words. If you see something, it helps you to be more cautious of it. Uh, and the more you prayer journal, the better you, you get at communicating with other people. If you have the gift of speaking, I encourage you to write. Because the write stories, write poetry, write, you know, just write the scriptures. Just take time to copy the scriptures. And when you do that, you, again, you will be amazed at how it helps you to guard your words. God is waiting on the warrior in us to guard our words, to guard our words. And it, the more you guard your words, the more you're going to be a lighthouse. To, to the world, the more you're going to be able to spread the gospel, spread the good news. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you so much for, for anyone who listens and hears the teachings, and I pray your blessings over them. Father, I know that you want us to guard our words and to be cautious of our words because what we speak says a lot about our heart. What we speak uh, will determine our witness to those who listen. So Lord, I pray your blessing over our mouth. I pray, I pray your blessing over our words. I pray your blessing over us speaking more about you than us, um, teaching more of your truths. And I, I just thank you, Father. I praise you, Father, in Christ's holy name.